Hi guys, long time no see. I know, I know. We're just gonna dive right into this one. So here's the thing. I've been getting a lot of questions and comments on some pretty basic stuff. How to use your Helix as an audio interface. How to control the levels of your guitar, recording into your DAW when you're using your Helix as an audio interface. Some simple stuff like that. How do you set up your Helix to record a DI so that you can reamp later or drop, you know, something like Helix Native on it. Some simple stuff. I'm pretty sure I have videos on all of those things, but let's do it again. Let's go over it. Let's recap. I know the Helix has been around for a long time now, but there's still people getting into it every day. So in the interest of wanting to be helpful, let's do that. We're going to jump into Studio One. It is my DAW of choice. Things are going to be different depending on the DAW you use. You're going to have to do a little bit of due diligence and a little bit of research on how to do things like setting up inputs inside of your DAW. I'm going to show you how I would do it, how I do it inside of Studio One. Let's do that now. So we're here in Studio One. I have my Helix selected as my audio interface. We're going to just start a new song. We're going to do Helix tests. Doesn't matter. Hit OK. Now we're greeted with a very blank page here. So let's create a couple tracks. I will put them in a folder at a bus. This is not important to what we're doing, but it's habit. Now I'll bring up the mixer, all right? And I gotta do th a few things so that you can hear what is happening inside of the DAW real quick. Do this. Local, okay. So I already have it set up, but we're gonna show you. If we hit this input output button right here, it'll bring up this input output matrix. And Cool. So since I've recorded this whole thing once before and then proceeded to not set the focus up correctly, it was a big fucking waste of time. Coming back in here, it's sort of like at a default state. So this is what it would look like with nothing set up. Um, as a matter of fact, we can remove all of these things. So it recognizes we have Helix set as the audio interface, but we don't have any input setup. We're going to do that. And again, you're going to have to research a little bit on how to do this in your particular DAW. If you're using Studio One, you're golden. So we're going to add a stereo set of inputs, a left and a right and a DI. So we're going to add a stereo set. We're going to add one, two, three mono inputs. We're going to call this Helix Stereo and we'll call this Helix Left. Helix right, Helix DI. And I have these selected, input one and two. That is gonna be your default inputs for bringing in stereo effects from Helix. The left side, the right side, and the DI inside a Helix rack, Helix floor, and Helix LT. Your input seven and eight are going to be your direct feed for your DI. It's gonna be your raw guitar tone when you're using your Helix as an interface. So that is through USB. Input seven and eight are raw DI. Now on your HX Stomp and your Stomp XL, it is going to be inputs three and four. All right? Three and four on the, he on the HX Stomp, seven and eight on the bigger Helix models. So we'll set this to seven. We will hit apply. You will see these kind of Boom, light up a little bit and we hit OK. Now we come to our tracks. We want to record a guitar track with the process Helix tone, right? So we did Helix left and then we're going to go Helix DI because we want to record a raw DI. So we can set these both up to record. I'm going to now grab a guitar. Well, I mean, this is the cable 
the guitar cable. I'm gonna plug this into a guitar. I am using my PRS seven string Mark Holcomb and it has a never tune in it. I'm also gonna put headphones on. So again, we have our tracks armed. We have Helix left selected for this track, Helix DI, so we can even label it. Good habit to get into. So Helix left DI, Helix right. Nope, Helix left. Now I don't have any riffs in my head right now. Let, let's bring in some drums like a real human person would do if they're recording some music, huh? I think I have um, a little preset here. Nope, that's not the one I want. This one has too much kick. Eh, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, let's just pick doesn't matter. We just need something. This is just an example. Drop in some, I'm going to change the kit. This is the one, this particular kit has too much kick. It's too much low end in the kick. That's neither here nor there in regards to what we're working on. All right. Always turn it down a little bit. Oh yeah. So now we arm our tracks. I'm going to give myself a pre-roll of one bar. Now we can see we're getting signal. Now what I shoot for is around somewhere between negative 12 dB and negative 9 dB. And I'm doing that to give myself some headroom. In, in regards, in context of recording a whole song, if you have everything right up against zero, you're gonna get clipping. So I give myself some headroom, some space, some dB of space. So if I shoot between negative 12 and negative nine dB, my guitars will not be too loud when I start layering and stacking them and hard left and hard right panning them, all that stuff. And as I've shown you already, I've brought my drums down. We got nothing clipping over here. Okay, we're good. Now, let me show you how you'd go about setting up the volume. So one of the questions I get a lot is, how do I control the volume of my Helix tone going into my DAW? I'm getting no volume. Well, I got my headphones plugged into the Helix rack, right? I can hear everything. Obviously, that's how you're going to control how loud everything is in your headphones, if that's not obvious. And there's a few different places you can control the volume of your processed guitar tone. The most obvious is the channel volume, right? So we have it at 10, and then I have the output set to negative six. That is not how it would usually come. So we would set that to default of zero. Now, if we play now, and we take a look at this gauge right here, we're probably gonna be louder than negative 12 or negative nine. We're like bumping. We're like up to negative three. That's going to, when we get, when we start layering guitars, that's going to add up to clipping, digital clipping. And we don't want this. If I have my output set to zero, like it is default, I'm going to bring my channel volume of my amp down. Let's try seven. I'm blind. So that did it. Seven brought it down in my gauges, right around negative 12 to negative nine dB. So we're giving ourselves some space. So that's one way you can do it. Now, if you're the kind of person who wants to set your channel volume to 10 on all of your presets, that's fine. Go to here and let's bring it down negative six. We'll do negative seven. There you go. There's two spots you can control the volume 
of your Helix processed guitar tone. If you're the kind of person that wants to keep this all default, all right, I don't want to switch this. I want this zero. You know, you're being, first of all, you're just being difficult at this point. I'm just kidding. You know, you can bring in a volume, bring a gain, bring this down to negative seven. That's great. Same spot. If I get rid of that, we're too loud. Or you can always take, you know, oftentimes I'll have a parametric EQ. You can always drop it down here in the seek in your last block. Same results, right? I don't want this EQ. We'll keep this at 10 and we'll just do it here. It doesn't matter. You have options. Now let's just record some stuff, all right? So we're going to record a process track, right? And a DI. Let's do it. Very cool. Let's listen back. There's your DI. Cool. Let's pan both of these to the left and let's add a couple more. Um, mono track, shit. Mono track, let's bring those down here. Pan these to the right. We'll call this helix left or right DI and then helix right. I just want some symmetry here, right? So I have all the DIs in the center. I'm gonna mute this, record, and we'll do the same thing for the right side. Noticed I didn't set this up correctly. See, we're recording both helix left, helix left. That means we're just recording two processed tones. We don't want that. So I'm going to undo that, set this helix right DI to helix DI, like I should have done to begin with. Now let's try it again. And you can hear how terribly I'm playing also. Very cool. Very cool. So now we can listen to this again. Here's the DI. Why Windows? God, I hate Windows. I'll center it for the sake of demonstration. Now, if we unsolo this, mute these, we have, mute this. Oh, I want these to the right. I want this one muted, this one not muted. Okay. 
Now if we mute these and we just use our DI, we can drop something like, here, let's uh, do one at a time, Helix Native on this DI track now, right? Don't want that. Hey, why is it so incredibly difficult to read? Beautiful. All right, we'll just use this. Drop this on the other side. Not two presets I would use. Let's go to this. And I'll drop this one on. And now we're using DIs with Helix Native. playing but but there it is that's how we set up our helix as an audio interface that's how we set it up to record a processed guitar tone a di and i showed you a couple ways a few ways to control the volume of your processed tone those are some basic things that you might want to know if you're getting into this whole thing And that was the point of this video, was just to go over a couple of these basic, simple things that I've been getting a bunch of questions on. So I hope that you guys who have been asking that find it helpful. If you have more questions, please leave them down in the comments section below. And if I find them suitable, and what I mean by that is if, if it's something that I feel like needs some more in-depth explanation, and it's not just something you can probably look in the manual for. I mean, you can look in the manual for all this stuff, but you know, some of it is a little bit easier to grasp when you see somebody else do it. So again, if you have any more questions on some basic Helix stuff, leave them down in the comment section below and I will do my best to try and answer them sooner than three months from now. The goal is to not go three months without doing a video again, so whatever. Anyway, I hope you guys found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check the links in the description for everything I got going on. I'm in the process of making a video for the impulses that me and Stephen Barton from over at Gear Stuff and Things and from Close the Hatch, my buddy Stephen and I and his buddy Sean made a buttload of impulse responses and they are available on my webpage. Kind of soft launched that whole thing. But I'm making a video kind of going going over it and, and demoing them through some of my tones. It's something you guys have been asking for for a long time, so we did it. Um, they're available on my webpage. They're available over on Steven's webpage. Steven also created a um, preset pack using our impulses exclusively, so it's pretty cool. And that was the idea. So links for that stuff will be down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourself. Be useful to someone. And we'll see you in the next one. It'll be soon, I promise.